Thomas Jefferson was speaking on slavery in the United States and he said, we have a wolf by the ear. We cannot hold on to him, but we cannot safely turn him loose. In the one scale, we have justice. In the other, we have self-preservation. This is a very brilliant child. And I just don't think his potential was met because of what his life challenges were. The Five-Fifths Agenda for America is a national demonstration on reclaiming and developing black male human capital. Its working premise is that our founding fathers made a business decision to put justice aside and establish slavery in order to build the nation. When slavery ended, its child, Jim Crow, sent masses of black men to prison to work in slave-like conditions. This business model is now so engraved in the American psyche that today, the war on drugs, the grandchild of slavery, fills our prisons with countless numbers of black men. As felons, they cannot vote, they cannot find employment, and they cannot receive public benefits. It has created a cycle of poverty and despair that destroys families and destroys communities. It puts crime on our doorsteps and increases the cost of education and health care. It also erodes our moral leadership around the globe. The purpose of the Five-Fifths Agenda is to change the business model and help America move beyond the Three-Fifths Compromise in the Constitution, in effect, to help make America whole. It has four goals. One, to bring truth to the conversation about the relationship between black men and America. The condition of black men will not change until the business model changes. I stepped the other day, my cousin in jail, and I mean, my uncle's free, thank God. You know, that's like really the only father figure that I got. I mean, I, don't, I mean, I have my dad, but it's like off and on. I wanted to quit everything after I lost my grandfather because he's always been there, you know, little about five, 19 years of my life, always. I know my brother's here in the house, he sleep. <laughs> my other brother, he in jail. But he, he trying to butter himself. My father, he was never in my life. I used to see him from time to time in jail. And no, he was never in my life. I live with my mom and my dad. I was adopted. I don't really have a relationship with my father. I only met him one time. Two, to increase the number of black male bachelor's degree graduates. Bachelor's degrees are necessary to compete in a global information-based economy. Sooner college in general, I feel like none of my family never been there. This is my mother, Mildred Nancy Brown. She didn't have the opportunity to go to college herself. So, it, you know, it brings me a lot of pride to say that I can go. Three, to create large numbers of black male teachers to seed positive change throughout the learning continuum. Um, I, I struggled in life, especially as a young, as a young kid, um, and teachers, were always, always my main source of help. Who really stood out to me was Miss Foshe. She was my uh, talented art teacher. After I graduate from Suno, I'll be a teacher for at least two years. And I think that's big on giving back to, to the community and helping the next generation and inspiring, you know, young kids to, you know, grow up and want to help others. The students that will be in my class would not make the same mistakes I made. Four to establish historically black colleges and universities as institutional bases for systemic change. It will take a generation to change the business model, and HBCUs are the only American institutions that are mission-driven to do the work. The Five-Fifths Agenda for America was researched and designed based on best information and practices. A pilot started in July of 2012 at Southern University in New Orleans to test the program design. It is named the Honoré Center for Undergraduate Student Achievement. The following excerpts from their admissions interviews will offer some insight into the lives of the Honoré men. The black men they die every day from the jail, from being in a wrong place, wrong time, and I don't want to be a statistic. I come from a low-income family, couldn't afford a lot, but I did work hard in school. I feel like I overcame a lot of adversity. Quitting means you lost, and I don't like to lose. It's right, it says in your heart. And a lot of people say that I'm real smart. 3.4. I'm a fast learner. I, I work good with people. I'm the quiet. GPA of 3.3. On a GE test that I took in 10th grade, I got mastery on the math and the English portion of it. Varsity basketball. Dr. Martin Luther King in the church play. Vice President of uh, Student Council. I'm dedicated. 
I was voted most likely to, to succeed by, by, by my uh, senior class. So his teacher told him that it's because they found out because he was really bored because he knew some of the stuff that was in the class. So he just did his work and then he just talked, talked, talked. Right. A lot of times that the lesson has slowed down a little bit, I'm able to understand it better and to be able to solve the problem. I got a lot to bring to him. I was the leader, so I had to be up first. Shannon's family um, has always been interrupted with trust. I have little brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. I walk to school. I walk from school. You know, I'm in the Lord Knight Ward. You never know mm -hmm. what can happen. I witnessed, you know, people getting point blank shot in the face. I just recently got in touch with my biological mother. Um, my mother couldn't provide the basic needs of living food, sometimes lights or electricity or whatnot. So it was a struggle. Take care of him, his brothers. It's just us. I've got him since he was about almost two years old. From age one years old, Shannon has been in the household with me. We took him in because we didn't want the family separated. Nobody was going to take in six children. I'm an only child. I'm a mother of four. I have a daughter with special needs who can't see. His youngest brother, I raised him from a three-week-old infant. But I have my own children also. I want to be positive and not just on the corner selling drugs or trying to trying to be the hardest dude in the street. If I be around people with a positive attitude, some of that could rub off on me. I just want to better myself. I'm trying to set an example for my little sisters. Love, caring, and guidance. I got the love from my own guardian, and I, I, I believe that y'all will give me the guidance I need to guide me on the right path. To been where he's been and to see him want to go forth and do something better with his life. That's, that's so hard. Everything had to be earned. Everything. The only thing I asked, go to school, get your education. I thank God for the blessing of how he's used share. If people may look at me and see that I look a certain way, I see myself being more than what other people could see me as. The Honoré Center is a rigorous residential program of support and disruptive interventions. All of the participants in the Honoré program are Pell Grant eligible and scored less than a 19 on the ACT. Nevertheless, they are hidden stars. But they, and countless numbers like them, will continue to fall absent the intervention of the five fifths agenda.